What's up, Sushi Squad? We back in some more and today we're going to be doing an updated tutorial on how you're going to end up building the candy barb. Now, generally speaking, for those of you that have seen my previous build videos, candy barb's pretty much going to end up being the same thing. the The only thing that we're going to talk about that's slightly different in this game is, uh, or different in today's video versus my older videos, is that with the Shadow Hunter rework that still hasn't hit consoles as of this date right now, um, the candy barb ended up getting a pretty substantial change to its abilities, a rebalance, a rework, if you will. It didn't end up necessarily changing the abilities per se and their function, but it ended up just buffing the class overall. And I'm very very happy to report that Candy Barb is one of those characters, as, as with many of the other classes in the game after this update, that you can fully main. So you can actually use the Candy Barb for speed farming and you will be okay in the delves as well. Not to say that you're going to end up being necessarily bad in the delves, it's just that if you ended up taking your physical set of gems and swapping it over to something like Shadow Hunter, for example, Shadow Hunter is going to end up doing better in the delves. But in, in terms of speed farming, perfectly fine. Now, there is a couple different options you can do when you build this character, whether or not you're building it towards speed farming or towards dealing high amounts of damage, which it is very subtle and doesn't make as much of a difference as you would think and frankly speaking i would recommend that you go for the speed variant of this class but we'll end up getting into that uh you know throughout this video so speaking of gear and the stats that you're going to be going for on them i would recommend that you have attack speed as the second stat on any of your pieces of gear the light stat of course just doesn't really matter uh, every other gear in the game ends up having uh stat one and stat two whereas crystal gear basically just adds light as a 1.5 stat but we still end up calling the third stat on crystal gear the second stat so when a second stat reroll event shows up you can end up rolling that uh, stat around and changing it anyways the point is that i would end up suggesting that you end up having attack speed second stat uh you know not that i have that right now because that means you have the option of having your fourth stat be either uh movement speed for speed farming or crit damage for a damage build so it, you know it ultimately ends up depending once again on the way that you want to end up playing the character uh, or maybe like me you rely on knight subclass ability for a lot of your movement uh because you end up going on your mount and having a high enough uh knight power rank means that you're going to end up having a pretty decent amount of movement speed which means that you don't necessarily have to have high movement speed on the class per se now another thing too that would be taken into account in terms of the speed of the character is the class gem ability which the class gem ability for the candy barb makes it so that your number one ability does a vertical slam uh versus without the classroom ability he kind of leaps forward and can end up covering insane distances uh not to mention if you're speed farming for example if there was a ranged enemy right here and i'm in the air and the enemy tags me you would end up keeping the momentum from that shot and while that is still present with the uh, vertical slam the horizontal slam is going to end up utilizing that very very well where you would end up uh, trying to get the enemy to shoot you the same time you end up doing your horizontal leap without the class gem and then you would end up covering an insane amount of distance but anyways i just wanted to you know mention that very briefly because that's kind of going to be the bulk of how you're going to build the character. Uh, for your ally, you would either end up using the animated jug, uh, you know, delve ally, or you could end up using jingles just because it's going to end up giving you the cooldown reduction. Uh, generally speaking, I'd say you're using the animated jug for speed farming. You're using jingles for delves because, again, you want to bolster up the amount of damage output that you end up doing when you're in the delves and so on and so forth rather than being a speedy character. And by using jingles or chromatic or whatever you know uh, you could end up having the uh, ability i guess not chromatic prefect penguin i think is the physical version right either way you have the cooldown uh, so that you can end up using your ult a lot more often because that's going to end up being insane amounts of damage not only for the candy barb but also for your teammates because it's going to end up increasing their uh, attack speed and if i'm not mistaken the uh, uh the the candy that shoots out of it uh, in this update also boosts physical damage 
it's it's called like a rage candy or something i'd have to double check the patch notes but i think that it's the candy that triggers from your ultimate ability ends up now giving you rage candy as well unless that was tied to like one of his other passives or something like that but either way it doesn't really matter too too much just the fact remains you want to be using all of your abilities uh and then there's going to end up being for your banner generally speaking you're going for one that has light on it i always actually just use the you know the ones that have the highest light value because i don't have a permanent torch uh you know if you're farming leviathans regularly you could go for the daily leviathan torch or craft the weekly one or if you're lucky you, you can end up getting a permanent torch or perma torch as we always call it which is a very very rare drop from a leviathan where it's a permanent torch that never ends up dissipating uh for the ring <laughs> ignore the ring that i'm using Ideally, you obviously want to be using a candy barb crystal ring. Uh, and for the hidden effect, you're probably going to be going for spin to win because that's going to make it so that you can just hold right click and you're just going to spin, 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 spin. Uh, it deals a lot of damage. That ability in general is probably one of the heaviest hitting attacks of the candy barb currently. Uh, and having the hidden effect allows you to use that ability uh, a lot. It's, it's, it's pretty fun when you end up uh, getting it. But I, I you know, I just so happen to have a higher tiered uh, crystal ring that of course is a shadow hunter one but anyways uh for the flask though that's going to end up being kind of up to you generally speaking i always suggest using death defying for the late game because if you've built your character correctly you are not going to have that much health on the character and the end game enemies just hit so hard that generally speaking they will one shot you no matter what and so that's why having death defying uh is always going to end up being the ideal otherwise you might have to compensate by having more defensive uh emblems and so on and so forth but Another one you can always use is Conjurer's Crucible. Uh, you know, there's a lot of endgame flash that you can use, but generally speaking, Death Defying is going to end up being your best bet when you're doing delves and stuff. But if you're just doing Geode Surface, then you could swap it out to other ones that might end up making you uh, able to farm for a longer period of time without having to go to a station to refill your flask. Now for the emblems, there's a couple different options that you can end up using. Unyielding is always a really good one. Martial emblem, uh, chromatic is going to be really, really good and trailblazing as well. As so long as you can end up swapping sure strike off, because uh, sure strike is kind of going to end up being one of the required emblems until you end up getting further and further in the game. Uh, and then eventually once you're strong enough, for U10 and so on and so forth that you don't need to pop a flask to defeat enemies you could end up actually swapping uh, martial emblem off for any of the ones that I had mentioned uh, previously now if you're going into the delves, uh, I would recommend that you probably want to end up having Marshall just because of the sheer amount of extra damage that you have. And then you might want to have Unyielding for the extra survivability, but somewhere in there, if you can, I'd suggest taking Chromatic just because when you're fighting the boss in particular, Chromatic is going to be a godsend because you'll be able to, uh, you know, spam your ultimate ability more often than not. And as I said previously, that's going to be where the bulk of the damage is going to end up coming from. Now, uh, let's talk about the uh gems themselves now i <laughs> i don't actually have an ideal class gem okay so this is just uh, you know i don't have it like fully augmented i don't have three pearls in it or anything like that it, which just goes to show that i don't really main the barb that much but i know enough about this game and i know ab enough about the classes and i have enough experience with the character that i can end up sharing this tutorial with you guys now generally speaking we're going to focus on the cosmic gems first so there's only really two useful cosmic gems there's going to either be the vampire Imperium if you want survivability uh, and then the berserk if you end up wanting damage so either or is going to end up being just fine but the crazy part is that you have to try and get three pearls into light on all of your cosmic gems including your lesser gems and then the extra stats of course is going to be physical damage and crit damage respectively because you want to end up having the highest damage value possible but light is going to end up giving you a sort of armor penetration for the end game enemies and so that's why you want to have the highest light value possible now for your empowered gems generally speaking you don't want to have explosive epilogue, so ignore that. Uh, you're going to want to have pyro disc, and then I would suggest cubic curtain instead of explosive epilogue if you can. It, you know, you don't have to because obviously getting the specific set of empowered gems can end up being very difficult, uh, especially based on the specific colors of them. So that's, you know, my physical set of gems has explosive epilogue in it. That's why I'm using it on the candy bar right now. But generally speaking, what you're going to be going for on your main empowered 
power gem elements uh, is you're going to be going for physical damage, crit damage, crit hit, uh, and you can end up doing in the following where you have two pearls, physical damage, one pearl, crit damage, uh, and then no pearls into crit hit. Now, as a rule of thumb, this is just kind of a base, okay? You can mix and match. It doesn't have to be 100% the exact same pearl sets that I have. You know, lots of people like to argue that there is slightly better coefficiency, but it, it really doesn't make as much of a difference as people pretend it does. But the point that I'm saying is that if you have a couple gems that are slightly different than mine, maybe you end up having two pearls crit damage, or maybe even three pearls in crit damage or physical damage. It doesn't really matter. The main point is that you want to try and find a nice balance between physical damage and crit damage for your pearls because once one stat goes a little too high then the other one has a little bit fall uh you know a little bit of damage fall off because of it but anyways the lesser gems the rule of thumb that i always say just because it's a lot easier to remember in your mind is a three for three ratio where it's going to have three of your lesser gems are going to have two pearls physical one pearl crit damage and then the last stat would be crit hit up until the point you have 100% crit hit and then you could just swap that in for max health and then th uh, the other three lesser gems are going to end up having uh, the opposite where they're going to be two pearls crit damage, one pearl physical and then again the last stat is going to end up being either crit hit or max health because ideally you'll end up having 100% or as close to 100% crit hit as possible. I don't have that currently because my gems are all specifically set up for the shadow hunter but i wanted to swap them over so that i could end up giving you guys a, a good example of how you would end up building the character now uh, lastly i'll just kind of give you guys some numbers uh that you can aim for not necessarily being 100 percent optimal uh but for your physical damage you're going for anywhere over 100k i would say is going to be really good with a balance of your crit damage being at let's say 1000% and up, you know, and, and then obviously you kind of just work from there. That's going to end up being decent enough for U10 and so on and so forth. Uh, and then, like I said, your crit hit, you want to have as high as possible. But if you're missing that extra uh, 20%, you could end up using Sure Strike Emblem to compensate because it gives you 20% uh, crit hit for a limited amount of time. And yeah, that pretty much is going to end up covering it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would appreciate if you smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel and have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen.